Welcome back guys. Now I hope you understand about our folder structure. We need to talk about two important things. One is how Django flow works and the second one is how Django structure works. These two are really important to continue our project. But before doing anything else, let us first start our project. Now to start a project or doing anything else with your Django application on terminal or CMD, make sure you remember two points. The first one is that your virtual environment is activated and the second one is you are in the correct folder. So first let me activate my virtual environment. Remember to use tab for auto completion. It would be quite easy for you to enter into any directory. Now here my virtual environment is activated. The next thing is I need to get inside my Django project folder. So for that you can use CD that is change directory and then the directory name for which you want to switch. So I would be using CD Django project. That's done. I am now inside my Django project folder. This looks fine. So remember this is our workspace now. Everything we are going to do with Django project would be inside this. So let me run my command Django admin start project and then the project name. Remember this project name is really important and you can think of a good project name according to which you can set layout of your project. I would be using taskmate. This might take few minutes but if I am going to open my Django project now you will see different type of files and folder. So let me go inside this and this is my folder now and you will have several files inside this. So it's better to switch from our this screen to our VS code screen or maybe Atom or your PyCharm so you will understand the structure of your Django project. Now this is our project folder right now. So I have opened Django project inside my VS code and here you will see my taskmate folder. Now let me explain you some small things regarding this particular folder and in the next lecture we will be talking about Django structure as well as Django flow which are quite important for you to clarify whole Django thing. One important thing I need to talk about is if you can understand these two points Django structure and Django flow you can basically build any application that you want. You can build a clone of blogs, you can build clone of e-commerce, you can build clone of any other website. So the important thing is you need to be clear with the Django structure as well as Django flow. Now here let us talk about our taskmate. Now this is our project folder right now. So this is our main project app. Django is completely divided into different type of apps. So this is our project app. Later on if we try to create a blog in our website, we will be creating a blog app. So there will be new folder called blog inside our taskmate. So taskmate is our project. This is our app. And if we create a blog, the blog will be considered as app. Everything in Django is divided into app. This point will be clear by next lecture. At currently, all you have to understand is this is our main project folder. That means we have several files which will be only present inside this folder. Let me talk few seconds for each file. The first file is init which is not really useful for you at any point of time soon. We basically don't touch this file during our whole course. Even with intermediate level or expert level this file is not really useful. This is just to initialize our project. The next one is settings.py. It is one of the most important file throughout our project. We are not going to edit this file much but this file control our whole project. Here you will find base directory which help us to connect all the files in our project. Next will be security key. So this security key is kept as a secret by project administrator to keep our project secure. So whenever we share our codes with anyone else, we usually hide this security key or remove this one. And this key is really important for production. Next is debug. So whenever we are working on our project, we turn it as true. But whenever we host our project or deploy our project, we turn it as false. Then here we have allowed host that is all the domains on which our project is going to work. Then installed app. This is really important thing. As I told you, Django is divided into different apps. Each section that we are going to work will be divided into apps. Don't think about these apps as Android app or iOS app. These apps are basically Django features that we are dividing. So here if I create a blog, I would be creating a blog app and then add a new blog app inside my installed apps. 
नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू शुड टेक केयर ऑफ इज डब्ल्यू एस सी आई एप्लीकेशन सो दिस इज यूजली यूज वेन वी आर गोइंग टू डिप्लॉय आर प्रोजेक्ट इन टू आर सर्वर देन वी हैव समथिंग रिलेटेड टू डेटा बेसिस सो एट करेंटली वी आर गोइंग टू यूज सीक्वल लाइट थ्री फॉर आर प्रोजेक्ट बट इफ यू आर गोइंग टू यूज माई सीक्वल और पोस्ट क्रेस यू नीड टू चेंज एंड कॉन्फिक दम हेयर एंड देन वी हैव ऑल डिफरेंट थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू ऑथेंटिकेशन टाइम जोन लैंग्वेज एंड अदर थिंग्स सो वी कैन कंट्रोल आर होल प्रोजेक्ट थ्रू दिस फाइल एंड इट इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फाइल द नेक्स्ट वन इज यू आर एल्स इट बेसिकली कंट्रोल ऑल द राउटिंग दैट इज डन बाई आर प्रोजेक्ट वील बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैम इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर देन वी हैव डब्ल्यू एस जी आई फाइल विच इज यूज वेन वी आर गोइंग टू डिप्लॉय आर प्रोजेक्ट एंड दैट्स इट फॉर आर प्रोजेक्ट एप फोल्डर नेक्स्ट इज आर मैनेज डॉट पाइप सो दिस फाइल इज बेसिकली यूज टू कंट्रोल एंड रन आर सर्वर सो इवन इफ वी आर वर्किंग ऑन आर लोकल सर्वर और ऑनलाइन सर्वर दिस फाइल इज गोइंग टू रिमेन सेम एंड वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू एडिट एनी थिंग सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर दिस लेक्चर आई होप ना यू हैव सम बेसिक आइडिया रिगार्डिंग जैंगो प्रोजेक्ट डोंट वरी इन द नेक्स्ट टू थ्री लेक्चर्स यू विल बी क्लियर विद ईच एंड एवरी डाउट सो सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर लेट अस रन आर सर्वर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम Now in this lecture, let me quickly run our project which we have created in the last lecture. So all you have to do is just jump onto your command prompt, and here you have to change your directory and get inside our task made folder. That is your project folder. And once you are inside your project folder, you have to run a command called python manage dot py run server. Remember, you have to run this command in your project folder itself because manage dot py is present here only. so just run this command and it might take few second to load your server and here you can see your server is ready now this is your current port that is your server port so if you are working with an online server that is once you have shifted your whole project on an online server this might change at this point of time we are running on a local server so you might see this ip as well as this port the next thing is you might have seen this db.sqli3 that is our database file so if you jump back to your settings.py here you can see this is our database which we have given name so if you are someone who is using postgres if you are someone who is using mysql then do change your database before running your server for the first time remember we have run this for the first time and it has executed several files now before talking anything else let me open my server that is my ip and my port and here you can see i have a django screen the install worked successfully congratulations and currently you can see this notification that i am seeing this particular screen because my debug is true that means i am currently into development phase if my debug is equals to false that means i am into production phase production phase means my site is live to all the public now if i open my command prompt or terminal you will see a message called you have 15 unapplied migration so what is this migration so we need to understand this during our django structure as well but let me brief you a bit migration is related to our database so whenever we run our application for the first time or whenever we edit anything with our database we are going to get this message at currently there are 15 unapplied migration that means there are 15 different changes to my database and since this was the first time so i have to handle this migration so for that let me stop the server all you have to do is use control c and if i try to refresh this one you see it's now stopped let me jump back to my command prompt and here you need to use two commands first one is python manage.py make migration and then second one is python manage.py migrate so the first one is help us to convert our queries and the second one is help us to actually apply the queries now here you can see i have applied these migrations Now if I run my server I am not going to get this notification again so if I run my server again remember you can use up and down keys in your command prompt or terminal to get previous commands and let me run my server again and you can see I haven't got this message or notification again regarding migration that means we have applied the changes regarding our database one more important thing these database changes was related to our these app 
so we have something related to our administration we have authentication some sessions everything was previously handled by django so that's all for this lecture i hope now you understand about how to run your server don't worry in the next lecture we are going to focus on our structure as well as our django flow that will clear up most of your doubts thank you for following this lecture see you in the next one hey guys welcome back now welcome to one of the most important i guess the most important lecture of this whole course that is understanding the structure understanding the flow of our django application so the first thing is how do this app works so for that we need to understand how the django flow works so if i take a simple example here you can see this image and it has several points our browser urls view model database templates and you so i have also followed different other images that talk about the same thing so here let me clear you first thing when i talk about django structure i am talking about all the files all the folders that are included in this and when i talk about django flow that means i am talking about the major thing how this is transferred to that how our database work and what are the files involved with our function and how do this front end work or how do this back end work so first let us talk about our django flow remember django follows mvt that is model view template if you talk about any other framework maybe of php that is laravel or any other framework they follow mvc that is model view controller which is almost similar so if i talk about mvt model that is related to databases view that is related to functionality of function codes that we write and template that relates to front end part how our website is going to look so the first two points relate to our database and the functionalities that is our back end part and template works with the front end part so all these three are really really important to work on a website now here i also want to add a c so it is c mvt which is controller configuration or mapping whatever you want to call then model then view then template So what actually happen when you visit a website? So here, if I talk about two website that is Paytm dot com and Amazon dot com, uh, I don't know if they are famous for you or not, but let us consider them as a site and don't refer them on their popularity. So first thing is, if I talk about whenever I visit Paytm dot com, my Django application first view this URL. So that is it actually map. Okay, I am on my home page. That is my Paytm dot com is home page or index page for me so then it moves towards the view that is it start searching for a view that is related to my index page when it get the functionality of that index page that is they might need to throw some ad they might need to show some important slider or anything else that is controlled by our view now view is connected to our model that is our database so it might need to throw some sliders but from database it will fetch what type of slider it need to throw so that is controlled by our view and model model means our database thing all the things that we are going to fetch from database and view decide what functionality that page cover so once we are on to view we connect with model check what type of data we need to show we then go back to view return that data to view and then view connect with our template and show that data on our browser i know this might be tricky and you might be confused let me take simple example i came on amazon.com it checked its url with the help of url it got to know that it is related to home page got all the functions of home page connected with database then return all the database related query that is all our data to our function and then with the help of this function show that on our template that is on the home page and then revert back to browser so this was example related to home page now what if i visit login page so if i click on login now here url will map everything with the help of this particular link now they know that this is the login page so they will call the login view that is view that handles login page connect with the database get all the related query then revert back to view then show the template that is show our login page so that means everything is in the flow with the help of url view model and template now i hope you understand the importance of url 
So if I visit anything on paytm.com, for example, if I visit this mobile recharge section, that means if I just visit paytm.com, it will call our homepage view. Now if I call paytm.com slash recharge, it might call different view which may return different functionality, different database item and also different template. So that's how everything is controlled with the help of these things. This might be confusing but let me talk about Django structure now. So the first thing I want to talk about is Django is divided into different apps. I'm not talking about iOS app, Android apps, but I'm talking about different sections of Django. So if I visit amazon.com and I talk about different applications that are possible. So Amazon relates to different things. So we have a e-commerce section, then we have a selling section. So that can be divided into a different application. Then I talk about gift card section. That means it is totally a different section. That is a different application. So whenever you can divide any project into different section, it is an app. If I talk about paytm.com, it can be divided into different application that is different section. So paytm has movie recharge section, flight booking section, bus section, train section, deal section that is it's e-commerce, then event booking section, hotel booking, uh, buying and purchasing car, some gift vouchers and all different thing. They also have trip planning. So that means they are different section and they are different application. So if I try to build something like this, I need to divide my project into different section that is our application. Uh, this might be confusing, but don't worry. Let us do a simple example. So in our application at currently, we only have one section that is our project. So that is our task mate. Now, if I want to add my first section, that is maybe our blog or maybe our to do list or maybe our daily diary. So these are different section of our website. And I can work on them with the help of apps. So let me create my first application as to do list. First, let me interrupt my server. And now to add a section or app, all I have to do is run a command python manage.py start app and then the app name. Remember here app name is important. So I would be taking app name as to do list. And if you want to mention underscore app, you can do that. And let me press enter. Now, if you check out the background, you see we have created our first application and we have number of files inside this particular app. Now, if you remember during our flow, I talk about model view templates. So at currently you can see model view. Now we need to create a URL also. Create a new file and call it as urls.py. Remain it as it is. But whenever you create a app, Remember to add it inside your settings.py. Remember if you are not going to add this application inside settings.py, our Django project is not going to recognize this particular file itself. So we have to mention in our installed app in our settings.py. So setting and all the other files for our production and deployment inside our project app folder. And this is our first app. That is our first section. Think about it. If I want to add a blog, I will be creating a new app called blog app. If I want to add our daily diary, I would be calling it as new app. That is my new section. So that's how it flows. I hope now you understand bit about Django structure and flow. In the next lecture, let us talk about URLs, how this mapping happens. So as I said, if I call amazon.com, it will directly map everything. That is my view functionality from index. And if I call login page from Amazon, so it would call a view that is functionality that is related to login page. So we'll be talking about this from the next lecture. I hope till now you are clear with everything that is our structure and flow and difference between project and app. This is the best part. If you can understand this, you can complete any project in the shorter period of time. Next lecture is important. Thank you for following this lecture. See you in the next one. Hey guys, welcome back. Now in this lecture, we are going to talk about URLs as well as views. So URLs are something regarding related to configuration and mapping and views are related to our functionality of that page. I hope this would be clear by the end of this lecture. So now let me open the first URLs that is our project URL. 
so whenever we open our home page that is our website link or maybe our ipo and port link so we are going to hit this url at the very first time first let me run my server and talk about this so at currently i am just hitting my home page that means if i talk about an url term i am just visiting slash or empty link the second is if I talk about my admin, so this is a URL that I have already defined that is by default from Django. Let me visit this one. Here you can see our Django setting easily map this one. That means whenever we are going to visit our domain link slash admin, it is going to call this particular function. I hope this part is clear. Think about our own application. We are going to create a to do list app. So let me create a link our domain name slash to do list. So for that I need to define my own URL into my application that is my app. So what happened whenever we visit our website it visit the main URLs and then it see which Django app it needs to redirect. So if it is related to to do list it is going to redirect to this particular URL. If it is related to blog it will redirect to blog app URL. So we have to define this. Let me remove all these comments and here define my to do list URLs. So all you have to do is define a path and the first thing I need to pass is my link. So I would prefer my domain link slash task. So that would be my to do list application. So I would be using task. So this is my URL. Remember this one and then here I need to redirect to my particular application since this is the main project URL. So I just need to add a include and then which app I need to redirect. So let me first import my include. All I have to do is from Django URLs import include. So this will help me to connect with URLs of different app that is Django app. Now I can use include and here I can mention which URLs I need to redirect. So whenever I am going to visit task. I need to connect with to do list app and then URLs. That's done means whenever a user is going to visit this task link it would redirect to this particular URLs and here we need to mention what we are going to do with this particular link. So here the first thing I need to do is just copy paste my URLs content and this is my app URL remember this one. Uh, let me remove all this. And here I need to import my view since I need to connect my URLs in view. Now here I don't need this one. I would be simply using my slash and here I need to mention which view I need to connect with. Since it is an application I need to connect with a view for the functionality. So if someone visit my task link it has to do something and I have to mention that. So for that let me mention my view or I have to do is views and then give a view name and I would call it as to do list and you have also provide a name for this particular link and I would call it as to do list. Make sure your name is into quotation mark. So our URL is domain slash task, our view name is to do list and our name is to do list. Okay this looks fine. Also don't forget to import your Django path. Now let us write a function with the name to do list. Just move on to your views and here you need to write all the views that are required for this particular link. Let me define my first function that is my to do list and it will take a parameter called request. So if we need any information from browser or anything else it would carry along with this request and here I just need to return something at this point of time. So I would simply return a HTTP response that is a simple text. I also need to import my HTTP response. You just need to do from django.http import HTTP response. Okay, this looks fine. Let me save all my tabs. So now what is going to happen is someone is going to visit our website. They are going to visit our domain name slash task. It would be redirected to our to do list app. Then they will come on this particular URL. They will see if that URL is blank. It would redirect it to our view take all the things that is required that is our functionality and it would return this particular response. I hope that's fine. If I visit my particular website now home page will give an error of 404 because we are running our server running our app. 
at currently only two URLs will work. If I talk about admin, this is going to work perfectly fine. And the second thing is our task. Now you can see I have a response. That means I can return our HTTP response. I can also return and render templates or HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all the different type of templates that we require. So that's the basic thing. We now understand our connection. And also we are now able to understand about URL routing. So if I do one small change and call it as ABC and if I refresh this one, I'm going to get an error because now it is under task and then I have to use ABC. That's how it is going to work. Let me revert back the change. The second thing is I can also change this particular link. I can use to do list and now our task link would be changed into our to do list. So if I refresh this one, it will give me a 404 error and I have to use to do list. So this is called as URL mapping and configuration. So whenever we visit any link, it is first goes to our project URL, then it redirect to our app URL and here app URL connect with our views, take a response and submit it. Now views can be connected with our models that is our database as well as template. So it helps us to get all the data from our database and send a response in the form of template. So I hope this lecture was helpful for you to understand all the configuration and view part. In the next lecture, let us create a template folder and start working on that part also. So we can take this project in a forward direction. I hope this lecture was helpful. See you in the next one.